Hi everyone. The recent events in London have brought Islam and terror back to the centre of public discussion. It's important not to unreasonably demonise members of a group, but it's equally important not to hide from politically incorrect truths. I think that the only way we can come to any kind of solution is to understand the belief system that is so intrinsically involved in this discussion. The book in this video focuses on Islam and women, and we get to hear from the women themselves. Whatever criticisms I may have of the book, anyone who truly cares about this debate should seek understanding from wherever they can find it, no matter how imperfect the source. I think we need to find a solution through seeking knowledge. It's at least a step in the right direction. One of the things that I took away from my time in Saudi Arabia was that you can be equally pious and equally striving to please Allah and come up with very different conclusions. That's a quote from one of the interviewees in the book Fighting Islam by Susan Carland. Let's take a look. Susan Carland works at Monash University's Center for Australian Studies as a lecturer and researcher. She also has a very well-known husband, Walid Ali, who is a presenter on the Australian show The Project. This book is based on the research she did for her PhD. In Fighting Islam, Carlin talks about women who fight sexism from within the religion of Islam. She has 23 interviewees, all of which came from North America or Australia. She claims to want to help erase stereotypes of Muslim women by providing them an opportunity to voice their opinions in battles. I have my doubts about whether this book was truly designed to reach people who have concerns about Islam, and I'll talk about that a bit more later. But look, I would struggle to recommend this book to others. I think the message is definitely worthy, and a lot can be learned from the women interviewed, but its presentation isn't good enough. You can't deny the friction between the Muslim community and the Western world at the moment. If Carlin truly wanted to make a difference to people's perspective, I think there would be some fundamental things she needs to change. Okay, so it's hard to know where to start with this book. Perhaps I'll start with the front and back covers. Did anyone else notice that there are only two quotes regarding the book, and they're both done by Gillian Triggs, a woman who's been widely criticised for her role on the Australian Human Rights Commission? Apparently, according to Triggs, complaining about racially segregated computer rooms could potentially be hate speech. But that's a story for another day. The fact that they had room for two quotes and they used Gillian Triggs both times tells me one of two things. Either they really loved Gillian Triggs, or they couldn't find anyone else who had such raving comments on the book. To be honest, I think it might be the second point, and let me tell you why. This book had some serious problems with creating a cohesive argument. There weren't any typos or anything as simple as that, although I did find some sentences that could have been cut into three. The major problem was the structure of the book. She'll often leave an idea as though she's done with it, and then bring it up again repeat everything she'd already said, and then add a little extra. Surely addressing each issue at one point would have been a more effective way of arguing. This book left me with the strong flavour of someone who just wrote the book in one go, a massive blah of ideas, and didn't go back over to get a good structure for clarity's sake. And it really is annoying, because I do think that there are messages in this book that could be perspective changing for some people. I just wish she had got it across better. Despite the barriers of the written form, there is still something to be gained from this book. Although it's not surprising to me that there are women within Islam who seek to gain more equality for women, it was refreshing to actually hear from them. Carlin seems to think that all non-Muslims view Muslim women as weak and silently oppressed. I find her views of non-Muslims throughout to be fairly ironic. She tends to speak of them as a group, and yet apparently she hates generalisations. I think it's entirely unfair to say that all non-Muslims consider Muslim women less capable than any other group. Given that Carlin wants people to put more effort into understanding Islam, I would have hoped for less demonization by her of everyone else. One of the main arguments of the book was that Islam isn't inherently sexist, and that any sexism within Islam is just the result of patriarchal interpretations. I must say I was surprised how many of the women interviewed had this view. I'm not someone who can comment on this, I don't know Arabic, but I'm fairly confident that there are plenty of learned people within the Islamic community that would disagree with this view. This is one of the things I find most difficult when trying to understand religions. 
It's inherently subjective, and most religions can be turned into religions of peace or violent murder on the basis of who's reading it. Carland and the women in her book may tell me what Islam truly is, but why should I believe them more than the imams who preach death to non-believers? That's why so many people had such trouble when Yasmin Abdel Magayed came out with this statement. Woman, as a person with agency, simply because they have an idea about what my faith is about? Excuse me, Islam to me is one of the most, is the most feminist religion, right? We got equal rights well before the Europeans. We don't take our husbands. This comment conflicts with almost everything the world today has shown. However, if it is possible for Islam to be reinterpreted to be better for human rights, I'm all for that and I don't think anyone would not be. After all, reinterpretation of religions has happened in the past, and I'm sure there are already many Muslims who favour certain principles of Islam over others. I think that the hopes for reforming the religion in a gender-equal manner have more chance of success in the Western countries where she found her interviewees, rather than the majority Muslim countries that are so far behind with equality at the moment. What I did like about this book is that Carlin didn't try to pretend that all is well in Whoville within the Muslim community. They do have these problems, and there are people within the community who are trying to combat them. Her portrayal of the double bind, however, I found a bit hard to swallow. The double bind is where Muslims want to combat the problems within their community, but they fear fueling Islamophobia. The problem I have with this is that if Islamophobia is based on ignorance, surely Muslims being as transparent as possible about the good and bad parts of the Muslim community would combat it, not fuel it. I can understand that there is a feeling of not wanting to make those in your community look bad, but surely combating sexism is more important than that. My biggest problem with this book is that I don't understand who Carlin's audience is. In the end, I have to conclude that her audience is sympathetic people who already agree with her views on Islam. There are just too many ways in which Carlin deliberately treats anyone who has negative views of Islam with contempt, and she surely must know this would drive them away. The first few pages of the book detail a conversation she had with a journalist. The journalist expresses disbelief that women who seek to combat sexism within Islam would want to be known. He felt that they might be afraid of backlash. Carlin made it seem like this was the most outrageous conversation she's ever had, when after reading the book I can't really understand why. Many of the women did in fact ask not to be named due to fear of backlash, and many expressed the difficulties they had when fighting this battle. Why does she treat this man with so much contempt? And why? Why does she think this was a good way to start a book? She basically alienates anyone who's had a negative view of Islam right from the start. In fact, the first few chapters are where she expresses her greatest distaste for Westerners, and then it gets to the really meaningful and important things later on. I think it's a real pity that she had to approach the book like this because it could have reached far more people and gotten through the message better if it hadn't been. Call me old-fashioned, but I would rather a book open people's minds to new things rather than reinforce their current ideas. But it seems to me that Carlin could only have been preaching to the converted in this case. If you've read this book, tell me what you think in the comments below. And if you liked this video, please like or subscribe. See you guys next time.